One of the things that I enjoy about Online Photo Raw is the fact that I can host plugins inside of the software in order to get different looks that maybe on one would not allow me to achieve. So today what we're going to do is take a look at some of my favorite plugins and how I use them in a workflow. Now, if you use plugins or if that's something you're interested in, let me know down in the comment section below, because I think that that's something we can discuss a little bit more and really understand how this works in our images. Let's jump into the computer and take a look. Here we are inside of All One Photo Raw, and I actually have a JPEG image that I'm working on right now. And the model here, his name is Dio. I'll make sure to leave his Instagram linked in the description box below, or at least the handle that he goes by on Instagram. Uh, but he was one of the models at the Build Expo, and I shot this straight out of camera JPEG. So if I hold the backslash key, you can see I did very little work, and all I did was I came over here to the local, and I turned off, or I got rid of some of the clipping that's going on in the image. So if I have the clipping indicators turned on, and then I go ahead and turn on this, you can see... Now, if I turn these back on, that the clipping just goes away. That's all that I really did here. And the reason is when you work with plugins, you want to make sure that you do your base edits first to make sure you are sending a good file with all of the dynamic range that you really want to control inside of that plugin. You want to send that out of on one into the plugin. So it's very important, at least for me, to go ahead and set that up ahead of time. Now, what we're gonna do is go ahead and come up here to layer, and I only have one layer selected, and then I'm gonna come up here to layer, and then I'll go over to filters, and we're gonna start off with a program called Boris Effects Optics. Now, the reason why I like to start with this one is because you can do some really unique and creative things. Now, if you wanna see how this plugin really works, let me know in the comment section below because I feel like this needs to be a dedicated video, but I want to show you how I like to work with it when I'm incorporating it inside of On One Photo Raw. All right. Now, I'm not going to worry about updating this version of my software, so I'll just hit remind me later because I will be getting the newer version of Boris Effects, Boris Effects Optics, but that's not what this video is about. So... The way that this particular plugin works and the reason why I enjoy coming into this plugin is for the film lab. Now, again, I like what I got out of camera, but I kind of want to tweak it and play with some variations. So I'm going to click over here on film lab. And then one of the things that I really enjoy is film stocks. Now, you can get a lot of different looks out of the film lab. And these are essentially like simulations, very similar to what you can get with a LUT or something that you can get with the match color tool that's located inside of On One. But the reason why I like to come into Boris Effects is because I have a lot of options that are built into it. All right. So let's just go ahead and select uh, film stocks. And I'm going to increase the size of this panel over here because all of my options that I get to choose from are over here. And this is really easy to use, right? You just click on one. And I think that this is a great black and white image. So I'm just going to go with it and I'm going to hit apply. And this holds true for pretty much any version or any uh, plugin that works with on one photo raw. All you have to do is launch the plugin and then work inside of that software like you would normally. And then you can hit apply and it's going to bring it back as a layer. Now, that's the reason why I'm telling you, especially if you're working with a raw image, you want to make sure that you do all your raw edits first. Now, I really enjoy this black and white look, but I think we can do more. So I'm just going to go ahead and rename this really quickly. And then I'm going to turn it off and we'll get back to our original image. I'm going to select that yet again. And then I'm going to come over here to layer. And I'm going to export, go back into Boris FX Optics, and we'll try a different film simulation. Now, I can do a lot of different things, and this is uh, why I enjoy working with On One uh, and plugins, 
is because I can just try out so many different things and then they layer inside of on one. And then all I have to do is use a mask to kind of blend those together and use some blend modes, which is something we I haven't talked about a lot on the channel. And if that's something you're interested in understanding a little bit more, let me know and I'll make a dedicated video for that. But continuing on with using the plugin here, let's click on looks just to change things up a bit. And that's a little interesting. It's like one of those old 90s glamour looks. I don't know if I want to do that. So let's go eight millimeter. I kind of like what that's doing. Gives like an older vibe feel to the image. Um, but I'm not sure if I really care for that. Uh, not basic either. So I'm just going to experiment here a little bit and then I'll come back once I find something that I really enjoy. So it didn't take long, but the bleach bypass look right here, I really enjoy that. So we're going to go ahead and apply that. And I could tweak this and, and play around with it a lot, but I don't want to make this video any longer than it has to be because the point of the video is really just to show you that you can host plugins and then how you can add that into your workflow. So if you are wondering like, hey, how can I use on one like Photoshop? Well, this is how I would personally use it. What's really cool here is I have these two looks, right? I have the uh, black and white look and we'll just call this BP look uh, for bleach bypass, even though that doesn't even make sense, but it's okay. As long as we know that we're working with some separate layers here. So what I can do on the BP look layer is I can come over here to opacity I can just kind of pull that down and you'll see the original colors start to shine through. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see what's happening there. All right. And just to make sure that it, you can see I'm pulling it down even further. And now I'm at 21% opacity. And for anyone who's not familiar, opacity is really just how much can you see through from the top layer to the bottom layer? All right. So if I bring this all the way down to zero, that means none of this layer that's titled BP look is actually impacting the photo or blended into the canvas. However, if I go ahead and pull up on the opacity all the way to 100%, it takes over the entire canvas. And one of the beautiful things about working with layers is this idea of mixing images together. And I do this a lot. I sit here and I play around with my plugins and figure out how to get a different look on my final image. So that's why I want to show this, because sometimes I think we and I say we collectively as influencers and, you know, users of the software and teachers is we try to show that you can just get a, a an image really fast. And the truth is, it's better to take your time. At least that's my opinion, because that's how I work. It doesn't work well for a YouTube video, uh, but I do take a lot of time. I sit here, I play around with different things, and that's how I learned the software. And I want to encourage you to do the same. Now that I'm off that soapbox, let's get back here and keep working. I want to go ahead and just pull down on the opacity of this. And I think around 56 looks pretty good. It's just adding in a level of contrast to the overall image. And I really like what I'm getting here. It looks very uh, editorial. It almost reminds me of my Nikon images. And now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and see what it looks like if I throw in this black and white image. So if I turn that on, and of course, that's going to come in at 100% opacity. So what that means is it's taking over the entire look of the image. And I, I do kind of like the black and white by itself. I should probably uh, make this its own version so I can save that for later. But let's just go ahead and pull down on the opacity. And now we're getting more of a muted look in the overall image. So this is a fun way of just redeveloping, working with other software. So that way on one becomes essentially the foundation to your edits. And then if you need to inject other creative ideas into your photos, well, you can host those plugins inside of on one 
and you don't need Photoshop or Affinity Photo or anything else. All you have to do is host it straight inside of On One. Now, I will be honest, not every plugin is compatible with being hosted inside of On One. If I find the uh, the link to the blog post that On One created that kind of explains which plugins are compatible and which ones aren't, I'll link that in the uh, description box because I think that that'll be helpful. But the good news is you can uh, try or take a download of a plugin, test it out, see if it works inside of On One, and if it does, great. If it doesn't, then at least you know. But this could be the way that if you're used to using Photoshop to edit your images and you're looking for something that works very similar to Photoshop where you can host a plugin, on one can do it and it's just that simple i'll leave it there but if you want to learn more about on one photo raw then go ahead and click the video that's popping up on screen now or consider signing up for a coaching call with me down in the description box below until next time i want you to stay inspired and keep creating peace